get it out. guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today we're going to discuss storage equipment and storage systems for Overland and adventure vehicles, okay? Overland Expeditions, Overland Expedition Vehicles, and then just all the way down to your everyday vehicle. You guys that drive your truck to work or wherever you go every day, your car or whatever. We're going to talk about how I've got mine set up. We're going to talk about some new bags that I just got in from LA Police Gear. They've decided to sponsor our rebuild of the Toyota Land Cruiser. So these drawers that you see here, they are part of a storage system for the Toyota Land Cruiser that's, I've already built it. So all the videos are already here on the channel. Go back and check those out. There's a storage systems video. There's actually a few storage systems videos that you can see of the original system, which was great, but it's gonna be really nice to be able to get everything into uniform organized bags from a single sponsor and then i'll also be able to print some or have some labels sewn onto velcro come like a patch you guys that are into patches like the patches and there's patches on here that i'm going to actually have sewn onto each bag so each bag can say for example recovery gear or medical equipment the medical equipment is very important to keep labeled and one of the great things about this med kit from la police gear is that it comes with the patch on it and you can order it in bright red or you don't have to but i really want mine labeled well because if i'm in a third world country which i'm often in and i'm not a incredibly fluent in the language i can at least know how to say grab the red bag okay because red cross doesn't mean red cross in necessarily every single nation, almost all nations, but just because the Red Cross is there doesn't mean that the people understand what it is. So we've got all kinds of really cool stuff, a little micro MacGyver roll of duct tape, face shield, some high quality shears, trauma dressing, okay? All kinds of your average standard stuff that comes in almost every med kit. You've got the tourniquet, which is also bright orange. And there's a lot of guys, there's gau uh, quick clock gauze. A lot of guys really are big proponents of the tourniquet. And I think in the U.S., the tourniquet's even more important. Or if you're in the military or you have a medical team, I think a tourniquet's very important. There's some areas, if you're very, 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 very far away from a hospital, that a tourniquet may not be as important or as great. But uh, in cases of maybe a snake bite or something like that here where I'm at, right now there's a, there's a snake that would kill you uh, very quickly and I'm... Um, right now many hours or at least an hour in a really crazy overland expedition vehicle like we've got going full speed an hour from a hospital so something like this at minimum so something like this is very important i will show you all of these bags individually i'll talk about them i'll give a rundown of them they're coyote brown like you can see and then we'll talk go into we'll go in depth about everything that you should have in your vehicle and i'll talk about what i have in mind okay this is my basically my full loadout you guys don't have to have all of this but you should have a little bit of each category so we'll talk about all the categories vehicle recovery gear tools what tools do you need what vehicle recovery gear do you need what medical equipment do you need stuff like that and i'll talk about the best way to organize it how to match it to your lifestyle and your vehicle and then we'll talk about each bag as well but i do believe that we're probably going to cut here into a time lapse and the time lapse will be several hours of work, I'd imagine, but it'll be us repacking all of the original gear that you've seen in the original videos, some new stuff I've picked up along the way, and repacking it all into a much more organized bag system of these bags that we've got here. going to discuss now the bags themselves from LA Police Gear, what bags in particular they are, and we are going to talk a little bit after that about the what I have in them and what I recommend carrying in your vehicle. So really quickly, let me discuss with you what bags we have here. This is the tactical 
bailout gear bag. All right, so I'm gonna read these off the list so I make sure that I get it right. This is the bailout gear bag. They're all obviously in coyote tan. I do like this one. I would say it's more of a, of a range pistol bag there. I've already packed them all, gone through them all, looked at them. It's great stitching, really heavy duty, what appears to be Cordura. They've got, some of them have some extra stuff on the bottom to kind of real, really reinforce the bottom, but this Cordura is really tough. The other bag is the, we have the Zombie Hunter gear bag as well. So this is the Zombie Hunter here. I do like the Zombie Hunter a lot better. I like my stuff to be inside the bag and it's got the Molly on there. This would be considered like a range bag as well. The both of the zombie hunter and the bailout come with the with the strap. The uh, let me let me go ahead and double check here that that I'm getting the the names right. Yeah, this is the zombie hunter for sure. They're very similar bags. The bailout bag has outside more outside pouches. I put my medical stuff in here. This doesn't come with this sticker on here. So just the, it is an LA police gear patch, but I put more medical equipment in here. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But just to let you know that that's kind of like their version of the range bag. My favorite, though, bag that I've received from them is this big old duffel, all right? And it even doubles as a backpack. It's got backpack straps in here. It's got this really tough lining on here to keep it kind of from, to protect it. It's got all kinds of pouches, and it's going to work perfect for my system, my drawer system. But that bag is really, really awesome. It's the carry-on duffel, so it's a great travel bag. I just really like it. It can be used as a backpack. But I like duffel style bags because they're so fast to access the stuff that's in them. Just zip open top. But really, man, that's a great, great bag. I would highly recommend the, it's a $49, $50 bag. And I would highly recommend the LA Police Gear carry on duffel bag. So I've got some other bags that I'm going to show in the future. Uh, this is not all of the bags that they sent me. They sent me a couple other bags that I'm going to use inside the car to store some stuff inside the vehicle as well. This is the outside storage stuff. The medical kit, this is really, this is the kind of the final thing they sold. It does come with the, with the patch on there. Really cool, comes with, uh, comes with this patch on it. It comes with all kinds of great medical stuff. I've got even more medical stuff that I, that I like to keep. So I've got a full medical loadout that's very particular to my needs. But this one is basically a, a bleed to stop the bleeding this is basically a, a a plug patching kit for for your body okay so any you know we're looking at a type ifac type uh, kit that we're looking at maybe you get shot or something of that nature and we're looking at really stopping bleeding we're looking at that's it i mean tourniquets duct tape quick clot gauze all of your ifac stuff so really just a, a very combat role specific and then I've got an, I've got a, this, this is packed more for, and that's what I would recommend doing as far as your medical kit goes. I recommend carrying at least two of everything. So I recommend carrying a medical kit for grave emergencies. And that's something like this, uh, uh, so you don't bleed out a kit. So you don't bleed out. And then I would recommend carrying stuff specific to you. And this is stuff specific to what you know how to use. So I've got suture and stitches things to give stitches. I've got a suture kit in here. I've got an Israeli bandage. I've on the outside, I've got all kinds of, um, I've got a hydration intravenous hydration kit in there. If I need to give myself solution, an IV solution, I've got all kinds of, uh, different medications like antibiotics and medications dependent on to be on the country that I'm in. If I'm in a country where I've never eaten the food before, I'll have diarrhea meds. If I am going to have to be awake for 15 hours straight, I'll have some caffeine pills or uh, pre-workout. So all, anything that I'm going to be taking is stuff like that. I'll have allergy medication, all that kind of stuff that you would want to have, even all the way down to antibiotic soap, okay? And it's important that you have the antibacterial that is uh, unscented, completely unscented. So that's for if I need to be washing a cut or anything like that, keeping, so it's 90 kills, 99% bacteria. But that's what we're talking about there, guys. I will now give a brief rundown of the stuff that I have in my vehicle, and we'll talk about what you should carry in your vehicle. The first thing that I'm gonna say is, every vehicle should have 
some sort of medical gear. First off, every vehicle should have some sort of change of clothes. Okay. Chains of shoes. You got to think about if your car breaks down and you're somewhere stranded, or if there's rioting, looting, even in the city, if you're not somewhere stranded and you've got to get out of there, you might be, you might have a, you might be a woman with a desk job and you have to wear high heels. So you've got a change of comfortable shoes. If you're a man and you got a desk job and you wear very uncomfortable shoes that you can't walk 50 miles in or that you can't, you know, move and and get around and all that stuff. We do have one of the bags here. I'll show you with a change of clothes and then just everyday use stuff. I've got a bag that's a lot of camping stuff in there as well, because I'm going to be, it's an expedition and adventure vehicle. So a lot of times I'll be living out of the vehicle, that stuff you may not have, but vehicle recovery stuff is something that's very important as well. So I'll, I will just, I'm just going to kind of go around here and, and talk about what I have in this bag. I have all kinds of oil, brake fluid, and different, all of the different vehicles, fluids, the fluid for the differentials, the fluid for the engine, the fluid for the transmission, fluid for the brakes. Okay. So I do have different fluids. I do recommend keeping fluids in your vehicle. If you can, if you have enough storage space, it's not one of the top priorities, but it's near the top priorities. And then also depending on your brake system, the type of brake system you have, how much brake fluid you need, how much oil you need, if your car is prone to leaking, if it's not, but I keep all that stuff. I like to, and if you can, it's good to have. There's some people that aren't going to be able to do that. This is all tools. Okay. I can break down and rebuild my truck with this toolkit. Okay. I have all the sockets, all the wrenches, all the hammers, all the vice grips, everything I need to cut to, I've got torque wrench. I've got everything in here. Okay. So you guys no, won't necessarily need all of this toolkit. I've got also in here, I've got high lift uh, pick. I've got a high lift shovel. I've got a, a Halligan tool. I've got bolt cutters, all kinds of really this, this bag probably weighs 300 pounds. All right. Maybe not 300, but probably 200 pounds. So you guys probably won't need all of this stuff. And what you should have though, is the tools, it, it, just like the medical stuff, you need to have tools that equal your level of abilities. If you can break down your car and put it back together and you like working on vehicles and stuff like that, have all the tools to do it. All right. If you can't, there's really no reason to have it. At least have enough to change a tire, at least have enough to change your oil, at least have enough to do some minimum maintenance stuff. Okay. I do have a strap wrench. Okay. Here. And this is for changing the oil. If the oil compressor is really tight, if the oil, excuse me, I've got compressor stuff in here too, but if the oil, filter is really tight. I've got this. So this is all vehicle specific stuff. I do recommend carrying some vehicle specific stuff. I have extra fuel filters, extra oil filters. I have a air down kit for if, when I want to air down my tires because I run beadlock wheels. This is all stuff that you are going to need to make specific to your vehicle. All right. If you have a, whatever your vehicle specifics are, if you've got a race car and you know, your car has certain things that you need to have with it, then race car issues, then you do that. If you've got a very luxury vehicle that, you know, you need stuff for your particular vehicle. Universal stuff that's in here is a uh, frog togs for, uh, it's basically a poncho for if it starts raining and I need to change the tire in the rain. I've got compressor to air down. I've got this to air down the tires, a uh, uh, air down kit. I've got compressor, all the compressor stuff to air back up the tires. I've got uh, a pump for liquids that are drinkable liquids. And I've got a pump for fuels. I've got jumper cables. Jumper cables are universal. Everybody should have jumper cables. Everybody should have an oil filter. Everybody should have a toe strap. I've got a toe strap down in the bottom there. Everybody should have road flares and tire plugs. I've got road flares and tire plugs down in there. Those are all things everybody should have. All right. A pair of gloves that we've got here is something else that everybody should have. So we've got the tool bag that are tools that can be used in anything for vehicle recovery. I've got all my vehicle recovery stuff in there. All right. So that are, those are tools that can be used from anything from vehicle recovery to building something. If you've got a work truck, then you've got all the tools. Or if you, do, if you have a job, you may need to carry tools. All right. So I've got all my tools, then my vehicle specific accessories that are just all stuff for my car. I've got another bag here that is, let me 
Just straps. And some of the straps are already in use, but there's nylon shackles and attachments, and there's tie-down straps and all stuff like that. And I don't have all of them in the bag. I've got uh, some of them in use in, in, in other things and outside, but I will restock that. And I really think tie down stuff is important and straps. Okay. So you definitely need straps in your vehicle. I've got recovery straps on my bumper and then an extra recovery strap in here, along with all of my other recovery equipment, a high lift jack that's also on the bumper. So a lot of my stuff is on the outside of the truck, which you'll see in the future. If you carry a high lift jack plate, it's great. If you carry a high lift jack, it's great to have a high lift jack plate because if you do any off-roading, that's probably why you have a high lift jack because you've got a jacked up truck and or an off-road vehicle. And if you are off-road, the jack's just gonna sink into the sand if you get your car stuck. So you need one of these to put the jack on. I've got, for legality reasons, I've got some emergency, extra emergency kit in here the, that re is required in Central and South America. It's a, a triangle, a uh, road flare, some stuff like that. Like we said, I've got the medical kit in here. All right. So the medical kit is right here. That's something that I'm going to now, what I will do is I'll keep a medical kit one in each side over here. So now, now I'll have a, a medical kit in each side. Now this is one side of the vehicle. You guys saw the kind of the theme there. It's all vehicle based and tools. So tools and vehicle accessories. This side over here is more of my Overland stuff. So that other stuff is stuff pretty much everybody should have. Uh, uh, basically, uh, some versions should have some versions of what we have in the other thing. But this is more specific to my needs. And for you Overlanders and you adventure people and you van life people, now's the time to tune in because this is the stuff that we're talking about for you. For you survivalists, you preppers, this is the stuff you're going to want in your vehicle. What we've got here is a go bag. All right. This go bag has been reviewed in other videos. I have basically in here all of my stuff that's in the Bone Tactical Ultimate Bug Out bag. So all my Ultimate Bug Out bag stuff is in here. I put it in this Geiger Rig bag because Geiger Rig sent me the bag and because I do like the fact that it's got the water bladder and the drinkable water. So this is how I've got it set up. This is set up for wilderness it's not a good idea to carry this if you're in the city if you live in the city if you even if you live in a town because you're going to have to bug out through the city to get to the woods and this is going to make you a target i've got this in here basically just for running when i'm in the woods and i like to keep i probably will end up transferring since i just packed all this stuff and i'm doing it for my sponsors i probably will tr end up transferring this because i like to be more versatile into a bone tactical uh gray man operations pack so it'll be more low profile because i don't like all this molly all over the outside of a bag that i'm going to be carrying so i will show you really quickly the gray man operations pack is this and you can see the difference between these two bags this bag is great if i'm going to be hiking camping if i'm going to be if i am going to be just kind of relaxing but if there's any kind of a threat outside threat or if it's a survival situation or a real bug out situation, I want this bag because it doesn't draw too much attention and it's considered to be gray man. It can, it can be what I want it to be. I can be who I want to be and I'm not gonna, this bag is gonna make me a target. This bag, this, this Geiger rig bag with all the Molly is gonna make me look like military. It's gonna make people where I'm at right now. If I walk around with this, people are gonna be scared. They're gonna think that I'm DEA. They're gonna think that I'm uh, something, uh, you know, something that doesn't want to be con a person doesn't want to be considered something like that around here. So I will probably end up changing it. And even in a bug out situation, you're going to want more low profile. So I will end up switching my 24 hour stuff, my uh, 72 hour bag. Okay. You check out my other videos on 72 hour bag, but you've got fire, water, shelter. I've got a great article on the website. Amazing in-depth article on bonetactical.com everything you need in your bug out bag, your 72 hour pack, whatever you want to call it, your go bag. So check that out for more. I've got a chair, a camp chair, just great to have a chair. When you're, when you make a fire, when you're sitting somewhere, when you're enjoying yourself, one of the first things you realize when you're out in nature is that you don't have a wonderful place to comfortable chair to sit down in. And if you're the type of person like me that likes to enjoy a cigar and sit by a campfire or a great view, a chair is something 
that you're going to want. I like this Helinox Hel Hel chair. It's great. It supports me. I didn't think it would. It's, I've been using it for a long time and it's never broken. I actually strapped this to the back of a, a Ranger when I had coronavirus. I made the, the video because I had to ride out outside of the Ranger, couldn't ride with the other people because I would get them sick. And I strapped this in, in, a, in a monsoon in the back of a of a side-by-side, -side, went th crazy through the mountain with winch straps and it didn't break. Unbelievable. And, taunts, and this is really just, it's an unbelievable, unbelievable chair. Uh, so I won't promote any gear unless it's great, but this is great. I've got this tent, that I, Big Agnes. I like Big Agnes. I've been using this tent from Big Agnes other than the, the bag itself ripping, which I might have to change the bag itself out to one of these other bags. Now that I'm looking at that, I probably will. The tent, okay, Big Agnes. I also have a sleeping bag from Big Agnes, which is nice. I've got a fishing kit in here, which I can pull out, put in and pull out. If I want to pull it in and put it out, it's just a fishing kit off Amazon. In this bag, I've got all of my bug repellent, sunscreen, sunblock, any kind of skin protector, personal use, stuff like this, stuff I want to access quickly. If I'm going to be getting out of the car in the woods or getting out of the car or doing something, I'm going to want to either put sunblock on my tattoos, which I, even though I have it, I still don't do it, but you're supposed to. I need to start doing that, uh, which is probably too late now. But uh, the s repellent is really important because the mosquitoes are carriers of disease. I've had dengue, okay? It's not fun. I've got all my food in here for the vehicle, so I've got the food. I've got the Optimus Camp titanium cookware and the Optimus stove and then the, the fuel in here. So I've got my food, a way to boil water, everything in here ready to go. So when I want to eat, I've got it all in one of the duffels ready to go. I've got the, I can put that tent up on the bed of the truck and I can put this mattress pad in there and I can sleep like I'm in the Ritz Carlton. It's a beautiful thing. Uh, great setup and it all like you can see fits great in here the other I have all of my camp gear in here basically everything that I am going to be using as far as my adventure gear my overland gear I've got a pillow all right a little pillow that's really pretty much the worst pillow I've ever had it's a Bear Grylls one but it works uh, so I still have it I don't love it it's probably the only thing from the Bear Grylls brand that I'll that I use but it's you know it is what it is and I've got a change of clothes. We talked about having the change of clothes. So for you guys that tuned out, uh, not wanting to have your, not having an Overland Expedition vehicle, it's time to tune back in, change of clothes. I've got shoes. I've got a pair of hiking boots in here that are broken in. Okay, broken in hiking boots. I've got toilet paper. That's all stuff that everybody should have in their vehicle. Binoculars is something that I have. You don't necessarily need to have. I've got Two more rain suits because I have usually I have guys that are traveling with me, so I have rain suits for at least up to three people. I've got uh, underwear and socks, several pairs of socks in Ziploc bags. I've got a fire starting. I've got tons of fire starting stuff. There's several. There's all the fire starting stuff is in my go bag, and then there's more fire starting stuff in here, as well as a a little bit of uh, liquid, sterno liquid for for starting fires or I can just pour diesel fuel or gasoline because I have all of them with me. I use gasoline for my camp stove and I have diesel fuel in my truck. Then we can, we go over here and we've got more soap, antibacterial soap, mole skin that uh, I have in both bags as well, a knife sharpener. I've got a uh, water purifier in here. Okay, water purifiers, your water purification system. I've got the survival straw, which is smaller in my other bag. I've got an extra set of gloves in here. And that's kind of everything we've got going on in this bag right here. It's all of my just adventure stuff. Stuff when I stop and camp. This is the camp and adventure themed stuff that I'm going to be using around the vehicle. So in closing, what we've got here is we've got our tent, which is the shelter. We've got our sleeping pad. All right. We've got our food. All right, this is all, uh, I've got a way more stuff here than what you would need if you're just gonna want to be prepared in your vehicle. This is adventure loadout. So this is l extended trips. I've got all my camping and comfort gear in here. Everything that I'm gonna want when I'm sitting around my, my campsite, when I make camp, when I wanna access something quick, it's gonna be in this bag. I've got the chair for sitting around the campfire. I've got everything to make the fire. 
I've got a fishing kit if I'm near water, a medical kit right when I open the drawers. I've got a medical kit on both sides, emergency medical kit. It's in a red bag so I can say, hey, grab my medical kit. It's in a red bag. We've got the, this is my go bag here. So this has one of all of the emergency supply stuff. There's more over there, but this is if I have a vehicle breakdown or if that's, that's so bad I can't fix it or if I'm just leaving the campsite to go hiking on an extended hike. I grab this bag. It's got food, shelter, water, all of my survival gear that I have packed in the, that you can find on bonetactical.com, the full article, read it up. You don't have to buy this stuff from me, but read the article because the article is amazing. It's a huge article that has everything you need to know about packing a bug out bag. Now over here, I've got my vehicle recovery gear and tools for vehicle breakdowns, vehicle maintenance gear, all of my, I can, I've got wrenches and sockets to fit every nut and bolt on the truck. I've got all of my liquids that the vehicle has. I've got the brake fluid. I've got the differential fluid. I've got the oil. Okay. All that stuff. I've got tie downs and straps and cordage and everything that is like that in here. And this, the, uh, we were talking about a second ago, I've got a full size medical kit. We were talking about a second ago, the zip ties. I do have zip ties in these interior compartments of these, I've got the good high quality UV protected metal insert zip ties. So they've got a, they, I've got all the different sizes here. They've got a metal insert in here and they're UV protected. So they're just super, super heavy duty. Really good, really nice zip ties. I've got all the different sizes all the way around. I've got my kit for my winch, winch front and rear like we talked about all of the vehicle maintenance and then accessory stuff. Since I've got a air compressor, I've got my air compressor in there. Since I've got winches, I've got, I've got my air compressor gear in there. Since I've got an air compressor, I've got my winch control since I've got a winch. So all that stuff, vehicle accessory stuff is all together. From there, I have everything pretty much organized. This side over here is like we said, vehicle breakdown, vehicle tools, vehicle recovery. I've got my full medical kit over here. On this side is adventure stuff, camping stuff, all kinds of stuff like that. You guys have seen in other videos how these drawers are going to be made. I will talk really quickly about what I recommend. I recommend at minimum carrying what I refer to as the readiness bag. Okay, I've got a readiness bag on my website that I've packed. That's the absolute minimum every single person in the world should have in their vehicle. It's waterproof. It's a little bag. So check that out. It's got fire. It's got water. It's got a signal device. It's got shelter. It's got all that stuff in the bag. It's less than a hundred bucks. Nowhere else in the world will you be able to get everything you need to carry with you for less than a hundred bucks in high quality gear. That's waterproof other than www.bonetactical.com. And I promise you that there's nowhere else in the world. You can get a prepack bag that has everything you need to carry in your vehicle other than my website. So take that into account. If you want to go all out like I did, we're talking about probably $10,000. All right. If you want to spend 10 grand on everything that you see here, then go for it. You can, you're going to have to build it into a system and you're going to have to figure out how to weld aluminum and everything like this. Then pull the truck off, pull the bed off of your truck and build it all into the, into the truck like I did. Then you're talking about a hundred thousand dollar vehicle build. And that's kind of the elite. So I'm showing you the best that you can do right here. And this is everything absolutely full out. Okay. The whole nine yards, as they say, uh, finally really will give a shout out. Thank you to LA police gear. They've really helped me organize this very nicely. It's the best organized that it's ever been. Now that I have these, this bag system from LA police gear, the pullout drawer system that we designed is awesome. And I do have, it, it works perfect for my pullout drawer system. I do have a, I do have sponsorship as well from high lift Jack. Okay. They, they sent me a, a brand new Jack and that's on the front bumper, but I've got the high lift Jack plate and the high lift accessory kit, which the high lift accessory kit is a really great way. It's in my tool bag there. It's a really great way to carry the shovel, the pick, the Halligan tool, all that stuff, telescope telescoping handle, really cool. High lift is uh, absolutely essential. I've got the wheels from Method Race Wheel. They sent me the wheels for the truck. Thanks to those guys. I started the truck running some s tires with a sponsorship, a partial sponsorship from Interco Tires. And 
they're the worst tires that I've ever used. Absolutely am going to recommend not using on your expedition vehicle tires from Interco. Uh, they may have some other type tires that perform well off-road, but their Super Swamper radials really are just terrible tires in my opinion from my experience. They gave me a discount to put them on my truck and make videos about them. So I will continue making videos about the tires and I'll show you probably in another video how I've had to fix the tires and revulcanize the rubber, basically meld the rubber back together on the sidewalls like seven times now. I've put like six different patches or probably more than that. I've got some, I've got, I've gone through eight tires from them. They originally sold me six tires and then they sent me two more replacements because I had so many blowouts and then I'm just, I've got tires now that are literally welded rubber on rubber back together that are still in the truck. I just, I have new tires that I'm going to put on there. I don't want to put them on yet uh, until I get the truck rebuilt because I'm right now in the process of rebuilding the whole truck and I want to put the new tires on when everything else is done. So I'm rebuilding the truck and just kind of have those, those piece together Interco tires that are all still on there. And that's, I believe that's the majority of the sponsors. Correct me if I'm wrong, comment below and let me know if I forgot a sponsor, but I believe that's the majority of the sponsors for my vehicle that I've got so far. And, uh, excuse me, the compressor is Vire Compressor. They sent me an awesome compressor, great compressor. I replaced the Vire Compressor with a Smitty built compressor that sucked. But that's, uh, that's pretty much everybody. Questions and comments below, let me know what you wanna see more of. If you want me to go through every single one of these bags, unload them all and show you absolutely every single thing that's in them all okay or if there's anything you missed or anything you want me to do different let me know comment that below thanks guys share this video with one of your friends so i can keep building vehicles all right please because i want to i have uh really great ideas and if you think they're good ideas then you got to help me out by sharing this video share the video with a friend like subscribe all that stuff thanks for watching bone out